Today we are going to be commissioning this DC distribution board panel. The panel comprises two compartments. The left hand side is the incoming main supply and on the right hand side is the outgoing double pole circuit breakers. Parts of the circuit on the overall system we want to energize are the rectifier unit to give us the supply and the distribution board panel below. We won't be using the battery bank or the interlink or any of the outgoing circuits. Firstly, we want to disconnect the rectifier unit from the fully charged battery bank. We want to reduce the potential fault level by just relying on the rectifier unit to supply the power rather than the batteries. We check all the outgoing double pole circuit breakers have been locked off. Then undertake a full inspection of the buzz bars, the wiring and the cabling of the supply that we will be energizing today. We're now going to prepare the main circuit for energization. We install the 630 amp fuses on the outgoing supply from the rectifier unit to the distribution board. We're now going to energize up the rectifier panel on this temporary supply. And then check we have the incoming voltage at the correct level so we can energize the electronics on the first module of the DC rectifier panel. Let's just check the 630 amp fuses are in good condition before we start. And next we want to conduct a test of the buzz bar copper arrangement and the cabling that goes off to the circuit breakers on the output circuits. But first, before we can do that, we have to disconnect all the instrumentation and controls associated with this. This shunt is for the ammeter. We open all the fuses and disconnect all the devices we need to disconnect. Right, first we apply our multimeter. It applies a very low voltage to check the resistance value between the positive and negative rails. And we have about 800K, which is far too low. So I was checking the drawings again, we find that we've got to disconnect this module which detects the resistance between the positive and negative rails. So the electronics inside the module is obviously causing this 800K value. Recheck again to make sure it's now open circuit, which it is. We now close up the incoming switch. So we can now check the connections all the way through to the rectifier unit to make sure that's open circuit as well. None of the cables are crossed. Now we're happy that the resistance value is high between the positive and negative rails. We can now conduct a higher voltage insulation resistance test. We're going to apply 500 volts between the two. Firstly, we check that the meter is operating correctly and put the leads together to make sure that it shows a short circuit. The meter there was warning that we have a low value. Do we want to continue? Yes. And we have a value of 0, 0.00 megaohms. So the first test, we go between the main panel PE bar and the positive rail on the DC supply. So with 500 volts applied, we have 999 megaohms over so it's complete open circuit now we do the same again on the negative rail so this is checking the cables coming in the buzz bars and the cabling off to the double pole circuit breakers on the output circuits finally we check between the positive and negative rails and it's completely open circuit so that's what we want to see being a DC supply and with a big battery bank behind, there's a hell of a lot of fault level that would come through if you had a short circuit on here. The fuse is protecting this if it was off the battery bank, that's 630 amp. So it'd be like an arc welder going off inside the panel if we had a short circuit. So everything on, we now power up the first rectifier unit, which will give an output of maximum 60 odd amps 
get the covers replaced, we're going to check on these little leads, safest point to connect onto, to take a voltage reference. We got 122 volts on there. Now we switch off the incoming supply so we can reconnect the meter. First, we will test it to make sure it is off. Okay, so that's all good. We reconnect this monitoring device and close the incoming breaker. Okay, so we've now got DC onto this board. So let's power up the instrumentation bit by bit. Firstly, we power up the meters. It's just the power supply to them. Second fuse gives the voltage reference to the meter. Okay, so we're reading 123 volts DC. And finally, this one is for the monitoring device. But after it boots up, it should give us a resistance value, 37K between the positive and negative rails. So it's reading the value of the output electronics on the module. Now we're going to go through turn by turn, power each of the modules that are in parallel on the DC rectifier. And once they're all energized, we can then take a value reading of what the resistance is between the positive and negative rails and set this instrument up accordingly. So if there is a change of resistance, it will alarm back to the DCS system. Okay, this panel is now energized. We're now going to leave this on. And at some point in the future, we will power down the rectifier unit and connect the battery bank back up again and re-energize.